Greetings, I'm Roger Newbold, and welcome to this episode of Experience Photography. I'm excited to be back with you again today. My fellow photographer and the editor for this episode is Matt Rich. However, I have no idea where he's at. Are you out there? Hello, everyone. All right, my friend. We are pleased to be back with you. In our past episode, we spoke about a particular shooting technique or style called minimalistic photography. We wanted to express how to say more with less in an image. I hope you enjoyed the information and went out to attempt some minimalistic shots on your own. And they really are fun and engaging. Now today we're going to pick up on some little bits and pieces that they don't usually get discussed until it's after the fact and like way too late. Now who doesn't love a totally strange message from a YouTube guy about something completely random? Although these may sound random to you, they are very important and the thing is they've happened to all of us. Uh, some of these, I'm embarrassed to say, have happened to me. Uh, necessity becomes the mother of invention. <laughs> and that's how you get the name experience in photography. We are here to help you save yourself from an early day's end and something that may be fairly costly. So let's take a look at figure number one. Okay, Matt, one is shows you a plain old zipper pack. This is rather commonplace. Of course, your pack may be a different size, a different color or style, but the zippers come together to allow uh, access to your bag, and that's pretty standard. Now, when the light is fleeting, the adrenaline's pumping high, I've picked up my bag without making sure those zips are closed together. Fortunately for me, my lens fell about four inches and rolled down the rock a couple of feet. Now, once the tear wore off and I was able to check and see that all was well, uh, I was relieved. But others have not been as lucky some have had a close-up look at the inside of a lens or two. You know, my stepson handed me the pieces of one of my lenses while he was trying to assist his mother in her frenetic speed of getting things ready one day. I know what they look like, and I don't want to see it again. But I know friends who have had crash bangs. I know a couple of other uh, of my compatriots. <laughs> ka -ching! It cost them a lot more dollar-wise than it did me. Tip number one we came up with is to make certain that the zippers are closed together and that they are marked or witnessed. So let's see figure number two. Figure number two has the zips together with tape or paint tips. I've been ordering tape from Amazon and wrapping my zips with several layers of that. You can see that in uh, figure number three. I've been using this kind of tape, green safety or bright yellow. It's really good. It's bright. It's easy to spot or safety orange is a good one. You can spot it in dim light or on a, any black bag. It really shows up. Now this is commonly seen in all my workshops. Now nobody picks up a bag unless the colored ends match together. For a few dollars more, uh, you save the day and your investment and following right behind the tape trick is another thought. Often this one came too late for some people. The second 
is insure your equipment. I called my insurance broker and I explained what I wanted to accomplish. He told me, oh, why worry? Your homeowner's policy covers up to $500. Now, after I finished coughing and then uh, tried to laugh even a bit, <laughs> uh, I re-explained the problem. And I finally obtained a separate policy in the thousands of dollar regions to cover my equipment. Now, you can obtain insurance from your broker or through those specializing in camera repair or replacement policies from other people. But I want you to really read and discuss this policy thoroughly so you know what it covers with your agent or someone of experience. And if you're doing millions of dollars, you might want a lawyer. <clears throat> Since I received my policy, my only claim was for a lens that uh, I dare not say heisted. Maybe they borrowed on a workshop. And this brings us to a, uh, number three in our list of good things to do. Make a list. What's in your bag for the day? Along with their serial numbers. Now, I made the big list for my insurance. And this master list has all the bodies and lenses with their serial numbers. And I just simply made multiple copies of this list. Now, as gear changes and I take out uh, different stuff on different days, different assignments, uh, all I have to do is take a copy of this list, initial, take a yellow highlighter and line the day what I'm bringing out for that day. Now, each evening when we come back in, uh, in a workshop or a personal shooting, as I clean and store my equipment and put it away for the night, I review the list. And if perchance someone has inadvertently borrowed a lens, uh, a questioning search can be immediately commenced. And this is a very low cost suggestion. It costs you a couple of Xerox pages, nothing more. Now my fourth tip, many photographers are alone or in groups, but they venture out into uh, unknown territory. Now keeping in touch and have some safety line of communication is very, very important. We found that uh, breadcrumbs didn't work and the old, you know, string line didn't work. We even tried emergency whistles uh, they'd last about one two to about four feet in the weather and when it's windy and you can't hear them. They don't work. So one of the most excellent pieces of gear I found to use is a GPS tracking software known as Gaia GPS. You can go to GaiaGPS.com and find out all about it. Uh, there's no need to purchase a separate GPS unit. You just load the software on your phone, including any purchasable load, uh, local maps of the general location that you're going off to. And by activating the tracking action, you can see where you've been on your phone and, most importantly, how to follow it back. Uh, Gaia is less expensive than the uh, satellite SOS emergency notification phones that uh, you can purchase. And Gaia is far more capable because you can use it for other things. Now, on my phone, I use simple, this is it, simple DOF software. And I use that for looking up and making uh, depth of field calculations when I'm out in the field. I use LE calculator software to determine very long exposure times and it has a countdown meter in there. I use Focus Stacker. That's a software package that calculates multiple image of pictures. I use Photo Pills and other software to predetermine 
where to get myself to for a particular shot. Photo ephemeris is another great one that uh, doesn't cost much, but it gets you to the right place at the right time, the right point, everything works. But all of these phone apps drain your battery. They're not so costly. It's not a, it's not a dollar and cent problem. It's a problem that drains your battery. So my fifth tip here is not to be stranded. I went out and purchased a solar rechargeable USB capable battery. Now mine is called uh, Solar Charger. Uh, the graphic has a little sun where the O would be in the word solar. Uh, I'm not pushing any particular brand. I'm just saying this one works for me. And I, I hook it to a carabiner and let it dangle from the back of my backpack. And in the daytime it charges up and uh, the battery pack is full. Using a USB uh, cord I can download right to my phone every night or as needed to keep it charged up even when I'm in the middle of absolutely nowhere. No one's given me any freeway, free hardware. I'm here. <laughs> if, if you'd like to, I'll be glad to take some. And I'm not really recommending any brand. I've seen a lot of these USB chargers on, on the market. And the fact that you can do it with the sunlight, it keeps you safe, keeps you happy. I, th I think it's great. Now, tip number six is... Mm, came down to more safety and convenience items that we carry kind of in the bottom of the pack. But I always carry a headlamp. It's good for getting back at night. Or I just bought a new small LED flashlight. It is really cool. The best thing is, is it's reach, uh, USB rechargeable. So I can hook it to my little battery and charge my flashlight. It's waterproof uh, and everything. It's, it's, it's wonderful. I carry also waterproof matches. A little thing of waterproof matches uh, just in case. I always carry a multi-tool. Uh, tightens tripods. It uh, does all kinds of things. Uh, fixes and tightens camera L brackets. I always carry a partial roll of uh, toilet paper, and you know what that's for, uh, or a thing of baby wipes. I think those are great. I carry a large lens cloth and a, a microfiber towel. Uh, I carry a fine point waterproof marker and a remnant of a roll of tape uh, usually gaffer's tape or even, uh, uh, what do you call it, masking tape. Uh, you never know when it's going to come in to help. Uh, and I carry a butterfly clip or two. We find need of these items so often that they have become staple things in my pack. And you just never know when you're going to need them. Now, my seventh tip came about in the back in the day when I had long hair I have no hair now uh, I collected up free shower caps that came in most motels one day it began sprinkling and then it began really raining so I pulled out my free shower cap and covered my camera and it worked now later I found many companies make rain covers that protect your camera and they that's what they're made for they do a splendid job but you know there's a, a cost to them what i'm currently doing is taking my camera and you can see photo ra here it's a bag of multi-size stretched food bowl covers yeah that's it they cost a couple of bucks, you get a whole range of sizes. Now, Photo RB, Matt will put that up, uh, is in my auxiliary pack. And when the rain comes, I simply 
pull out one of these little covers, I slide it on my uh, lens hood and hook it over the back of the camera. Seen in uh, photo C and over the back of the camera is photo D and then stretch it covers my camera in photo E and for two bucks I have a cover that will at least work in intermediate rain or light snow. It virtually weighs nothing and I can carry it and they're, they're just so handy for all kinds of things. Now my last tip for today came from uh, a lunchtime discussion. We're out in the desert. We're all sitting around at uh, noontime and uh, we're munching on our sandwiches and everything. And one student pulled out a small notebook out of his pack and he said, I have to write something down. This is important to whatever we were talking about at the moment. He says, I've got to add this to my things to do page. Well, at my age now, and my point of view has changed a bit. It struck me harder than our uh, lighthearted lunch talk. Upon returning home, I went over here to my whiteboard and I lettered in the corner, things to do before I die. Sounds morbid, but now I have a list of tips picture ideas, things that I can write about, uh, things along with uh, that I can prioritize my life and errands around. Photography is my way of life, but it can be a great hobby for you. And it's funny how these little things that we've talked about today make life more streamlined. You know, when we stop playing, and we begin to die. And my advice is get out there and play. Have some fun. Do something. Take a tip from the great photographer Ernst Haas. Learn to dream with open eyes. Now, observe. Appreciate the world. Make, make new images. Keep on shooting. Be brave. Hey, if you don't like it, erase it. Most thing is, is to have fun. Now, Matt and I hope we've given you some very valuable information today in these bits and pieces. I think they are. They have changed the way I do my work, and hopefully they'll make you safer and happier and keep your equipment safe as well. So please subscribe to our channel. Hey, give us that big thumbs up. And if you found this information constructive, we will really appreciate that. And by all means, keep those comments coming in. That's where we get these ideas and we bring those to you so you and I both learn. We both have a vital uh, two-way di dialogue and we learn together and that's splendid. So keep the comments coming. Thank you for tuning in today. It's been a great, great pleasure to be with you and share our world. So until we meet again on screen, so long for now.